हरे हरे कृष्णा ग्रेटफुल टू बी हियर ऑल ऑफ यू एम आई ऑडिबल बिहाइंड ओके थैंक यू सो टुडे आई स्पीक ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ हाउ कृष्णा transforms curses into blessings as recently we had the kartik month getting over and on kartik we sing the damodar ashtakam and in the damodar leela itself we see krishna doing this so especially if we consider the seventh text where this is the miracle kuvera atmajo baddho murtyai vayadvad taya mochitau bhakti bhajau krutau cha so the lord was bound but he liberated one who was bound narakura mani guru was bound so for all of us in our lives there are situations that come up which can seem like curses something terrible happens and when such curse like situations come up it is important for us to find the appropriate frame of reference in which to place it and the same event can be placed in different frames of reference say for example right now if you start feeling cold then you may say hey, is a window open over here or a door open somewhere because of which you are cold or you could say oh is it that my warm clothes are diff- are for- torn or faulty or is it that uh, i am having some temp- i am having some sickness because of champing cold now if you see the event is the same but you can put it in different causal boxes so i am feeling cold one causal box is that okay the window is open that means that causal box is related more to the physical situation hmm. another causal box is that it is related with okay the clothes i am wearing another causal box is related with my own body now somebody who has been here for a long time and somebody who just newly come over here now somebody who's been here for several years they know okay this is just the weather this is the weather of this place that's why we are feeling cold so you could put another causal box so so every event that we go through that we experience we all put it in some or the other causal box and quite often when people suffer from mental health problems usually what happens is that they start placing things in unhelpful or even harmful causal boxes so the events in themselves don't affect us it is the causal box in which we put it the simple example if i was at a mental health and spirituality conference so there was the people who were people who were sharing their experiences of how they had mental health problems how they recovered so there was one girl she was speaking that she was studying studying in university and she was also while studying she was also used to wait tables tables in nearby cafe to earn some money by the way and once she was carrying water for a customer and some of the glass slipped from her hand and fell down now when the glass slipped and fell she said at that time i started thinking if i can't carry even a glass what will i ever be able to do with my life and that began her slide into depression now how many of us have had a glass slip from our hands <laughs> <laughs> well it's not a it's not a particularly pleasant memory <laughs> but it's not why why would you think like that okay maybe maybe my hand was slippery maybe the water glass was wet or maybe i was distracted whatever but what happened it's one small event but if you put it oh this glass slipped from my hand that means i am worthless so what has happened you put the event in a very destructive causal box in a very harmful causal box so whenever anything happens to us we the effect of that on us depends on which causal box we are putting it 
So, <clears throat> I give talks all over the world and there are times when, at different times, different audiences respond differently. Mm -hmm. So, now, there was at one place I go and there is the audience, well, one person in the audience just sits right in front and glares at me throughout the class. <laughs> Not even stares, glares. Now, if the only way I can give a class is don't look at that person. <laughs> look at everyone else. <laughs> so then, now I could say, oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Or maybe that is just the default disposition of that person. <laughs> now, I don't know. If I put it in the causal box that I am doing something wrong, then I will become choked or paralyzed and I won't be able to speak properly. So for all of us, whenever events happen, it is, we often ask, this made me angry. This made me upset. This made me discouraged. Well, yes, that event is a part of the cause. But that event is not the complete cause. It is the framework in which we are placing that event. Why is this happening? Ca causal box means cause and effect. This is the effect of some cause. So what cause is it cause is leading to this? So for all of us, this is actually the inner work that we need to do to process life in a constructive way. Say suppose I was at a I was at a relation uh, uh, the mediation and the two people had a conflict and then the second person came and said to the first person that I know you are angry with me. The first person says no I am not angry with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the tone speaks more than the words. He says that no I am not angry with you. Anger is an expensive emotion. You are not worth it. <laughs> so now, if somebody has that attitude, then what is it they are doing? They are just not only upset, they are devaluing the other person completely. Then, if that is the causal framework in which you put it, then any kind of reconciliation becomes impossible. Mm -hmm. So, it's one thing to, to say that somebody has done something wrong and they should apologize or rectify. But it's quite another to just devalue the person completely. So, basically, we all, when we go through life, we place things in certain causal frameworks. And intelligence means to put things in the most constructive causal framework. I am not saying the right causal framework because in this case, it is very difficult to know what is right or what is wrong. When something happens, why exactly is it happening? It is not so easy to figure it out. So, for us, one of the oldest philosophical questions is throughout history is that why do bad things happen to good people? So, now what our tradition does is it place gives us an expanded causal framework to place this in. What is an expanded causal framework? That is, so now some people say that some atheists use this as an argument for saying God doesn't exist. If God is good, then why should why should bad good things happen to bad people? You could turn this question around and say, okay, why should bad things not happen to good people? What do you mean? No, good things should happen to good people, bad things to bad people. It's just, who said so? If God doesn't exist, why should the universe be orderly? So, the problem of evil presumes the existence of categories good and evil. Without the existence of those categories of good and evil, ultimately, if there is no ordering principle in the universe, if there is no higher divinity, then all that is happening is simply just, if, just uh, subatomic particles working according to impersonal laws are colliding with each other. And some collisions give us pleasure and some collisions cause us trouble. When somebody insults us, all that is happening is some sound vibration going into our ears. It is going and oscillating our tympanic membranes. 
no, there is what is the meaning of anything left so yes it is a problem but how do we deal with this problem so when bad things happen to good people we need to expand the causal framework and in one sense knowledge is essentially that knowledge is basically expanding our causal framework about 15 17 years ago for se several for more than a year and a half i was continuously sick every evening i would have temperature and i would shiver and the doctors were not able to diagnose anything at all and finally we did some tests and i went to the doctor and the doctor said looking very gravely at me you have got tb and my first reaction was thank god the doctor looked at me crazy what happened <laughs> you don't <really> understand <laughs> no so what happened over there was i was thank god at least it's been diagnosed <laughs> otherwise what do you do you, you, if it's not diagnosed it can't be treated also so there was a effect that is i was having fever but there was no causal box to put it in and it's a very helpless situation to be in so knowledge so all that i experiences that i have got some fever i have got some shivering or i have got some symptoms but what is the, i might say i am sick well sick is okay i am unwell i am sick but it's such a generic term that from a treatment perspective it is not very helpful what do you do so knowledge basically provides us more causal free boxes in which to place the events that we are experiencing so we all need some kind of explanation of why things are happening the way they are it might not be a completely exhaustive or clear cut explanation but we need to make sense of things mm -hmm. our human minds are essentially we could say meaning manufacturing machines we need to manufacture some kind of meaning sometimes it may be real sometimes it may not be real but we need some meaning or the other so knowledge expands our frame so whenever anything happens we could say that there are multiple levels of causes for it there is a immediate cause there is a remote cause and there is a ultimate cause mm -hmm. and similarly there is a immediate solution there is a remote solution there is a ultimate solution what do i mean by this so suppose somebody gets some disease like malaria now you could say what is the cause of malaria mosquito bite, mosquito bite. so now you could say that okay in the same house there were two people living and they both eat the same food they breathe the same air and if you measure both of their immunity levels are also similar but why did the mosquito bite this person only and not bite the other person you know why nowadays we have we have concern about uh, racial discrimination and gender discrimination why mosquito discrimination <laughs> so why did this mosquito bite me and not the other person <laughs> so now the the explanation that the mosquito bite caused the caused the disease caused malaria is a correct explanation but it may not be the complete explanation so the so the immediate explanation is what we can we often see or analyze at the physical immediate level but beyond that another causal framework we put it in is that there is past life karma and by one's karma some of us we may have meant we meant to fall sick at a particular time and that's why that mosquito bit us when a particular set of we were weak or whatever and we got over so this is another causal framework to put it in and uh, i talk with many doctors devotees as well as uh, uh, general doctors they say that no medicine it works but it is not always that you can say this medicine will always cure this person sometimes we we prescribe and still the patient doesn't get cured uh, i met one devotee he is he is he has survived six cancer treatments you know six times chemotherapy has taken and he survived first time he got cancer he his doctor told him you have 3 months to live now his cancer doctor has died and he is still alive 
so uh, the, the we don't deny the immediate cause but the immediate cause is not the complete cause so at different times we need to place things in different contexts so these are just two we could as i said there are multiple levels of causes we could put in there is immediate cause there is remote cause remote cause is our own karma from the past and then there is ultimate cause the ultimate cause is material consciousness is forgetfulness of krishna we are we are spiritual beings but we are living at a material level and at the material level we all are prone to distress because we are eternal beings and we are seeking pleasure in temporary things so we if we are in a ocean and a wave hits us and sweeps us away and because why am i being swept away it is because this wave hit me that's that's one explanation other explanation is because i am in the ocean so both explanations are true the wave hit me that's why i'm swept away i am in the ocean that's why i'm swept away so the point here is we can have different frames in which we can put the same event so suppose on a cold night like this uh, in a cold uh, in, during a season like this suppose somebody eats a dozen ice creams at night and then the next morning they wake up ice cream <laughs> <laughs> they have a terrible throat now what is their terrible throat because of their past karma <laughs> what do you think nice yeah past nights karma <laughs> <laughs> past nights karma so the point here is that now if somebody says oh my karma is so terrible because of which i got so sort of no your decision making is foolish your uh, self control is foolish over here so we don't have to necessarily we don't have to escalate explanations to levels which are not necessary so the most constructive means so if i'm if if i eat inappropriately and my stomach gets upset the solution is okay learn, let me learn to eat appropriately but sometimes it may happen that i eat very carefully and still my health goes down so then i have to understand maybe because of my past karma i have a sickly body so then i have to be extremely careful about things so basically for all of us when something happens when something happens to us especially something unpleasant something unpalatable at that time we need to place it in the most constructive causal box constructive causal box means that which enables us to either deal with it to deal with it in whatever way is effective sometimes dealing with it means just accept it you can't change it accept it and live with it sometimes dealing with it means make some serious changes by which we can deal with it there can be different ways in which we deal with it but we need the right causal box in which to place things and <clears throat> spiritual knowledge is meant to provide us such a causal box and what does it mean at one level spiritual knowledge tells us it's our own karma but in all in whatever shastra i have read ramayana mahabharat other puranas i have never seen anywhere that when somebody is suffering in great distress somebody else comes and tells them it's your own karma you are suffering they may say it oh i don't know what karma i did because of which i am suffering but nobody else goes and tells them that it's not that say when draupadi is dishonored actually draupadi was not dishonored it is attempted to be dishonored so when she was attempted to be disrobed at that time nobody comes and says you know what karma did you do because of which this happened to you because that is not the appropriate causal box to put it in it is when somebody is going through difficulties the important thing is not what is their karma the important thing to ask is what is our dharma what are we meant to do at that time if we start putting things in inappropriate causal boxes just like i started by talking about how when people get mental health problems say if somebody walks along a road and Uh, they they greet someone they nod someone and that person neglects them snubs them and goes away and they think 
and nobody cares for me nobody loves me nobody respects me world is such a terrible place well you know they they might be busy they might have something else on their mind so when then people can start feeling lonely and rejected and neglected so when in normal day to day dealings and people might just become too sentimental and they place small small things in just two generalized causal boxes but at a philosophical level also we can misapply philosophy that when somebody is in distress the question should be okay what is the causal box in which this distress can be best dealt with imagine if a baby is crying now should the mother think the baby is crying because of her own past karma ha <laughs> huh, that would be horrendous the baby has to really take care of the child take care of my baby has to be taken care of by the mother by the father whoever now sometimes it may happen that despite the best care despite the best medicine sometimes the baby is sick and the sickness is not going away and the baby cries so at that time we may be able to see what we can do so generally we all need to place things in constructive causal boxes so what 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 decides that a bo- causal box is constructive there could be multiple criteria but the most important criteria i would put is that it should create a positive frame of mind within us broadly when any distress comes upon us our reactions can be between two extremes one is resentful and the other is grateful resentful is why is this happening why is this happening why is this happening when if we are resentful often resentment of reality hurts much more than reality so when we are resentful it is what is happening is the situation is here i am here and my mind is here when my mind is filled with resentment then most of my energy goes in dealing with the resentment and very little energy is left to deal with the situation it's imagine say somebody was planning to learn rowing and they practice and they, they got all their friends to come and see exhibit my exhibit my rowing skills and then when they are about to start their exhibition of rowing all their friends are there they have their photos and they have the movie you know everybody share the photos on facebook and instagram and everybody praise me how how smooth a rower i am and then suddenly as they are rowing a monster wave comes from nowhere and then the next moment there is no boat under them and there are no oars in their hands now if they keep rowing at that time then you will sit down at that time okay now i just have to recalibrate now the main thing is just swim and get to the coast can row later so the point here is that if this is the situation this is my conception expectation ambition whatever you want to say and this is the reality so so often our expectations help us to shape reality for the better but so if we are here the expectation is here the reality is here then we we can shape the reality accordingly but sometimes it becomes like this we are here the reality is here and the expectation is here and the more we are dealing with the expectation the further we are going from the reality in fact one definition of insanity is that the gap between expectation and reality has become unbridgeable that when people are so caught in their own head this is how things should be that when things are in some other way we just can't deal with it so it's painful when our expectations are being thwarted but we need to recognize if my expectations are coming in the way of my dealing with reality then i have to put my expectations aside we we cannot as human beings we naturally have expectations and that's that's not it's not possible to not have expectations but what we can do is not have too much attachment to expectations expectations one thing attachment to expectations another thing expectations are okay, this is how i want to shape reality like this attachment to expectations is that reality is like this but still i am looking at the expectations well if my expe- my attachment to expectations is taking me away from reality and put aside the expectations and deal with reality so when we are resentful 
what is happening our vision is here and our emotion is here and that resentment with rea of reality it is it consumes our emotional energy so much that we have no energy left to deal with the reality so therefore at that time it is important for us to recalibrate okay now why did this happen wow somebody is rowing and say why did this why this boat have to come right now why does the wave have to come right now well you don't know it has come what can you do now i am in the water okay that plan is not going to work of me demonstrating my rowing skills let me get back to the so at that time if somebody puts it in, into the causal framework that you know why did this wave come just now well what are you going to do are you going to argue with a wave <laughs> well you can't it just happened so similarly sometimes things happen and okay i don't i can't make sense of this but what i can make sense i am in the water i am drowning okay why am i drowning because i am in the water what do i do get out of the water so we need to we need to be flexible this is actually the detachment and attachment when we talk about those things attachment one way of understanding attachment is attachment is psychological rigidity and detachment is psychological flexibility attachment is psychological rigidity means that i can look only at the expectations now this is how things should be why are you not like this you know why as uh, the one devotee he is also having some conflict resolution mediation so the other devotee said i am i know you are disappointed with me he said i am disappointed with humanity <laughs> <laughs> well humanity is all that you have are you going to live with animals what are you going to do hell we cannot we have to live with people we are imperfect others are imperfect so psychological rigidity means i just i am just caught my vision is fixed on my expectations alone i just can't see anything else psychological flexibility means okay my expectations are not working let me look at the reality and let me deal with that reality so what krishna does if we are practicing krishna so so now uh, this is the whole analysis of placing things in constructive frame we see this parikshit maharaj in the 18th and 19th chapters of the shrimad bhagavatam it's beautiful that Parikshit Maharaj is for a small mistake given a horrifying punishment, cursed to die in seven days. And at that time, what does Parikshit Maharaj do? When the sages come, he says, "I am so grateful that all of you have come to help me on this final journey that I am about to embark on." So he is not focused. He is not. You know, why did this have to happen to me? that question it's happened that question is not very helpful at that time so and it's interesting none of the other sages none of the sages over there say you must have done some bad karma because of this happened so in one sense the bhagavatam doesn't talk so much about karma at all it 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 rather than addressing the question why do bad things happen to good people the bhagavatam addresses a different question that is what do good people do when bad things happen to them? what do good people do when bad things happen to them and with respect to that so i said the resentful is a terrible thing to be in we, we just we lose whatever ability we may have to deal with the situation and how, parikshit maharaj ji is grateful so how do how can we be grateful and this is so terrible this is so unfair what do you mean be grateful how can i be grateful now it's it's possible that we we can't be grateful for all situations but we can be grateful in all situations we can't be grateful for all situations sometimes terrible things happen and it's just you know how's oh, horrible how can i how do you expect me to be grateful for this yeah it's we can't be grateful for all situations but our emotion doesn't have to be dependent on our situation alone so the situation is not something which i can feel grateful for but we can be grateful in all situations that means again we create a distance between the situation and the emotion and how do we do that 
So that will be the last part of the talk. I will talk about, uh, so what till now we discussed that we want to place, we all have, we can't control our situations, but we can control the causal framework, causal box in which we place the situation. And then we talk, if we are attached, we will place difficulties in causal, causal boxes that will make us resentful. Now we are saying how can we find a causal box that will be, uh, that will help us to feel grateful, feel positive. That requires, as I said, detachment is not, not caring for things, but it is psychological flexibility. So for this, I use an acronym called ACE. ACE is ACE your life with gratitude. So A-C-E. So when something bad happens, look for the good around the bad. Look for the good around the bad. If something bad has happened to us, our mind tends to fix it. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Yes, okay, it's happened, but that is not the end of the world. There are so many things that are good in our lives. In fact, if we are alive, then there is more right than wrong in our lives. Now, most of us probably we are in a 35, 40, 45. Some of us may be much younger. <laughs> but if we consider say 35, 40 years average age, now millions of people die before they come to our age. So there are countries in Africa where the average lifespan is 29 years. So if we just alive, there is more right than wrong in our lives. If we start looking, okay, look for the good around the bad. Say, Somebody has lost their job. Okay, this is terrible. But then, okay, I have a supportive family. I have a supportive community around me. I have some qualifications. I have some experience. I have some contacts. Yeah, I can get something else. So as soon as we start looking for the good around the bad, instead of looking at the bad itself, then we won't fixate on that situation. And now we could just, at, even at a material level, we can do this. At least look for the good around the bad. But at a spiritual level, it's even more. Because we understand at a spiritual level that our existence is not just limited to the body at the material level. Just, just, something bad might have happened to me at a physical level, but I am more than my body. And what happens to the body? It affects me, but it doesn't define me. So the, the good that we can look for that expands for us when we are having spiritual awareness. Because basically what spirituality does it, it expands the screen of our life. The screen of our life means, our, the Bhagavad Gita explains we are souls on a multi-life journey of spiritual evolution. And on this journey, our present life is just like it's a it's a long book and our present life is like one sentence in that book suppose you have some some novel and there's a particular place in the novel where the hero is being beaten the hero is being abused and the hero is miserable but i say, I say what kind of book has the author written horrible book but you keep reading it this is just one sentence Keep reading, the plot is going to move forward. So look for the good around the bad. That's A. What is the acronym we are discussing? Ace. Ace. So C is, then look for the good to counter the bad. So first is generically look at what is good in your life. Secondly, look for, okay, among all the things that are good in my life, what are useful for me for dealing with the situation? So, okay, I am sick right now, but I have health insurance, I have a trusted doctor, you know, I have overall resilient body. Uh, okay, these things help me to deal with it. At the very least, I have a disease, I mentioned about the TB earlier. Okay, at least the disease is curable. So, there are so many diseases which, which are just not curable, then all that you can do is just you have to live with the disease. So look for the good 
to counter the bad. And in third E is emerge. Look for the good that may emerge from the bad. We don't say that what is happening is good, it is bad. But good can emerge from the bad. And for the good to emerge from the bad, we need to play our part. And this is where we, it's not a general spirituality, but devotional spirituality is important. Many psychologists and so psychological surveys have found that being grateful is good for your mental and physical health. If somebody can be grateful amidst difficulties, then that positive energy, positive endo endorphins and others are created that help people to heal faster. So many people try to cultivate gratitude. But if somebody is not spiritual, not devotional, and even atheists talk about gratitude. So they say, I am grateful. Well, what are you grateful to? No, I am grateful in general. To say that I am grateful in general is like saying I am married in general. <laughs> And marriage is always to a specific person. You are not married in general. <laughs> so, gratitude has to have an object. Of course, that's, you can say always it's good to be grateful, but what are you grateful to? So, how can we be grateful amid difficulties? So, look for the good that may emerge from the bad. This is bad right now and the good that may emerge from it. That is, when we are in a particular situation, sometimes that situation is terrible. But that situation, if we go through it, we emerge stronger, we emerge wiser, we emerge purer. And we need to persevere through that situation. So for such perseverance, we need to have the right perception of Krishna. So when we want to look for the good that may emerge from the bad, that means that right now the situation is difficult, but Krishna has a plan. The universe works in an orderly way. Now what that plan is, I don't know right now. But if I persevere, then it will be found. It will be found. The idea over here is that the present is not the total reality. One of the common new age slogans is live in the present. And yes, it is good not to just be lost in the past or lost in the future. It's true, but all these slogans have their limitations. We live in the present, but we don't live for the present. Imagine somebody is sick and in pain and you tell them live in the present. That's hellish. Main purpose for living for them is I can recover and I can have a better life. So live in the present. We live in the present, but we don't live for the present. We live for something bigger than the present. And that is ultimately live for serving Krishna. So Krishna has a plan for every one of us. And there are times when we just don't understand what the plan is. And that's it's understandable because our, our intelligence is finite. Krishna's intelligence is infinite. Now we look at the present and plan the future. Krishna looks at the future and plans the present. So because coming at the same thing from different refer reference points, so it's very difficult for us to process why is this happening. So rather than trying to focus only on why is this happening, why is this happening? Okay, what can I do right now? How can I serve Krishna right now? If we have that attitude, then we can persevere through every situation. And we will find, even if we look back at our own lives, we will see that many of the things, bad things that have happened to us, they have led to something better in our lives, led to something good emerging for us. If you look at Srila Prabhupada's life, when Prabhupada came to America, at that time, he wrote this song, Markine Bhagavad Dharma. And the first line of that song is Boro Krupa Koile Krishna Adhamera Prati 
কি লাগি আনিলে হে ঠাকর বেগতে সো হি সেইং বড় কৃপা কইলে কৃষ্ণ কৃষ্ণ ইউ হ্যাভ ভেরি মার্সিফুল টু মি দ্যাট ইউ ব্রট মি হিয়ার হ্যাঁ ইফ ইউ লুক এট ইট ফ্রম আদার পার্সপেকটিভ প্রভুপাদ ইজ অলমোস্ট সেভেন্টি হি হ্যাজ নো মানি হি হ্যাজ নো ফলোয়ার্স হি হ্যাজ নো ইনস্টিটিউশন সাপোর্ট হি ডেন ইউ নো দ্য পার্সন হু ইজ গোয়িং টু হোস্ট হেম ইউ সে ভ্যার ইজ দ্য মার্সি দ্য ওনলি অ্যাসেট দ্যাট হি হ্যাড ওয়াজ ইজ বডি and that body also crumbled under two heart attacks now where is the mercy boro krupa well there is no krupa i can say but we say prabhupada is grateful so what is he grateful for he is grateful for the opportunity to serve his spiritual master for the opportunity to serve krishna his spiritual master had told that share krishna consciousness in the western world and prabhupada saying it better late than never i have got an opportunity and prabhupada was talking to his disciples he said that do you know why my god brothers they went to london to preach i came to america you know why now there could be many reasons after the second world war the, the stock of britain went down so britain was no longer that important america became much more important by several years later when prabhupada went to london when the british were ruling india they would boast the sun never sets on the british empire when prabhupada was in london he said the sun never rises on the british empire <laughs> <laughs> it is constantly so cold and cloudy and there is no sun coming so so but, but that geopolitics is one factor we can say but prabhupada in his own disarming humility he said that my god brothers went to london and they couldn't they they failed he said i thought if i am going to fail let me at least try at some other place so prabhupada is grateful that i got the opportunity to sir bodo krupa ko le krishna so what you could he could have seen all the bad that is happening but look for the good around the bad and then if you look at that song then prabhupada is prabhupada if you see is meditating on the bhagavatam he in fact it's a bengali song but he quotes several verses from the sanskrit bhagavatam in fact he follows krishna das kaviraj goswami who also does something similar many places in the chaitanya charitamrita which is bengali he quotes sanskrit verses so prabhupad quotes in the second chapter of the first canto where he is describing the process of bhakti how by hearing and speaking about krishna the heart can become purified so what is this prabhupad is focusing on the good to counter the bad so look for the good to counter the bad that okay there is so much materialism and sensuality and immorality around him but he is thinking if i speak the bhagavatam and people hear the bhagavatam then anybody and everybody can be purified dheera haiya shunya jadi kane bar bar bhagavatera katha se tab avatar that this bhagavat katha is you incarnated in this world in kali yuga so you can purify oh lord so therefore Prabhupada is saying, this is my resource. Look for the good to counter the bad. To counter this. This is, and then Prabhupada concludes with, Krishna, you must have some plan. That's why you brought me here. So whatever is your plan, make me dance. Na chao, na chao, Prabhu. Na chao, se mate. Ka shthera puttali jatha, na chao, se mate. Make me dance. Well, make me dance basically means what? Prabhupada says, okay, you must have some plan, Krishna. so look for the good that may emerge from the bad that may emerge and then we see the good that emerge was spectacular in 10 years shri prabhupad built 108 temples he wrote all the 70 books he went around the globe 14 times he even inspired thousands and thousands of millions of people actually all over the world to raise their consciousness so the good that emerge was phenomenal but uh, prabhupada also had to go through difficulties so if we understand this framework <coughs> and we equip ourselves then we can all be grateful and even the curse like situations that we are facing right now krishna can transform them into blessings because krishna can bring good even out of the bad so everything that happens may not be good but everything that happens can be for good 
So if you focus on trying to be grateful and serve Krishna, Krishna will convert curses into blessings. So I'll summarize what I spoke. I started by speaking on this topic of how uh, <coughs> how Krishna can convert blessing curses into blessings. So whenever any any situation happens in our life, be consciously or unconsciously place it in certain causal boxes. So <coughs> we need to place things in the most constructive causal box. If I am feeling cold, okay, is it because my warm clothes are not there, the window is closed, the weather is itself bad, or I am sick. So when we are mentally disturbed or mentally depressed, at that time we tend to place things in destructive causal boxes. So, knowledge provides us more and more causal boxes to put things in. If I am sick, I might just say I am sick, but a doctor will say, okay, you got TB. That knowledge provides us a more specific and use actionable causal box to put it in. Similarly, scripture gives us such boxes. So, I talk about events can have multiple causes. Immediate cause, say somebody has malaria, mosquito bite is the immediate cause. The Past life karma is a remote cause and ultimately material consciousness, forgetfulness of Krishna is the ultimate cause. So we have to find out which cause is, is workable on for us right now and work accordingly. So if I can find a diagnosis of the disease and I treat it, treat it. If I can't, then I just have to understand maybe I have to live through some karma, tolerate it. So we need to place things in the most constructive causal box. and. Often, when bad things happen, we might go towards a cause, place it in a causal box that makes us resentful. So, why is life so unfair? Why are people so bad? Right. We all will have certain expectations from life and people, and expectations can help us to shape things for the better. But sometimes, it, the expectations take us away from reality. Insanity often means that the distance between expectation and reality has become unbridgeable. So. Detachment means psychological flexibility, that we don't fixate on our expectations, but we let go of the expectation and redirect our attention toward the reality. When we do this, then we can find a constructive frame of reference. Constructive frame is that which enables us to be grateful. And how do we cultivate a grateful attitude? I talked about an acronym. What is it? ACE. So look for the good around the bad. Don't fixate on that, okay, what are the other good things in my life? Then look for the good to counter the bad, okay? How can I deal with this in the best way? What, do, what resources do I have to deal with it? Why the problem is there? I don't know, but okay, how can I deal with it? And E is emerge from the bad. So if we have a spiritual understanding, then we have a broader frame in which to place our present difficulty. And if you have a devotional understanding, then we understand that Krishna can bring good even out of the bad and therefore if we persevere then we will find out what good Krishna has in store for us. I give the example of Srila Prabhupada, how he was looking for the good around the bad, the bad was so much, he was weak, he was penniless, he was contactless, he was in a foreign land but the good was he had the opportunity to serve his spiritual master. He also saw the, look, the, good, for, the good to counter the bad, I have the process of the Bhagavatam. And by that, I can, I can counter the illusion in people's hearts and look for the good that emerges. Krishna, whatever is your plan, make me dance. So if we have that attitude, towards, uh, create, create a similar, cultivate a similar attitude, then even if we can't be grateful for all situations, we can be grateful in all situations and move forward constructively. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Do we have time for questions? Or one question? Anyone has? Yes, please. please. Okay. How can we have expectations but not be fruitive? That depends on how we see those expectations. 
Krishna tells us don't be attached to the results. Ma phaleshu kadachana. But then immediately after Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita, there is a Kurukshetra war. And therein, every day, the Pandavas set goals. Most famously on the 14th day, Arjuna says that I am going to bring Jayadras down. And Krishna doesn't say, hey, you have forgotten the Karma Nivadi Garasthi Ma phaleshu kadachana. <laughs> Krishna doesn't say that over there. So there is a difference between goals and results. Goals are what we set before we do an activity. Results are what come after the activity. So setting goals is natural. That's what inspires us to do our best. Hmm. But after we have done our best, Attachment to results distracts us, it consumes us. Say a student is giving an exam. I want to get maybe 4, 4.1, 4.2, whatever. I, I want to get CGP like that. That's, that's a goal that inspires them to study. Uh, but, so if there are no goals, we will not be able to, we will not have any inspiration to work. So goals are fine to have. But I say one exam is over now. And the next exam is coming, the students say, oh, how much will I get in this exam? How much will I get in this paper? How much will I get? Forget, that paper is over now. You go to the next paper. Don't be attached to the results. You did your part. Now, whatever is going to come is going to come. Now, move on to the next one. Next thing that you have to do. So, the whole idea of not being non fruitive it doesn't mean that we don't care for the result. It means we don't care only for the result. See, the Bhagavad Gita helps us to place our, I talked about these causal boxes, Bhagavad Gita helps us to place our work in multiple causal boxes. Our one box is that I do the work and I get the result. Another causal box is I do my work, if I do it dutifully, responsibly, then I grow in spiritual knowledge. Another causal box is that if I am doing it in a mood of service to Krishna, then by doing that work, I grow in my devotion to Krishna. I grow in my attachment to Krishna. So we would like if the immediate result also comes. But the immediate result is not the only result that we seek and the immediate result is not the what we are exclusively working for. So say if somebody is cooking food, now they want, uh, if they want the food to be cooked nicely, it's for Krishna. But we want it to be good. Everything that we want to do, we want to do it well. So being fruitive means reducing our vision to only the result. And thinking that this result, if it doesn't come, what is the use of the work? No, it's our duty. Do it diligently. Sometimes the results come, sometimes the results don't come. The important thing is continue your duty. You continue your duty gradually. Even if the immediate result is not coming, some bigger result is going to come. So set goals, but don't be attached to the results. Did I answer your question? So thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Itai Gaur Premanande. Shri Guru Chaitanya Charan Prabhuji ki, Jai.